Welcome to ITU Telecom 2017 here in Busan in the Republic of Korea. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Stephen Ibaraki, who is founder of the AI for Good Summit. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, it's a real honor and pleasure to be here. It's so exciting, you know, it's a great, great uh, conference and ex exhibition as well. So. Now, it's pretty, now, the theme of uh, this, this, uh, this year's telecom is smart digital transformation. I really wanted to find out what does that mean to you? Digital transformation is about things like smart cities, the proliferation of artificial intelligence everywhere around us. It's about um, in, you know infusing banking services. Really, it's found everywhere, right? Everything's digital. It's every part of our lives, and you really have to have a, a good understanding of digital to really be able to survive, and more than that, to prosper in this economy today. Now, I know that you have several title, job titles, uh, you wear several hats, but we've got here you, as a founder of the AI for Good Summit, perhaps you could tell us a, very briefly what that is, because not everybody will be familiar with it, or of course, people who attended this year will be, uh, very, very much so, but uh, perhaps we could just talk a little bit about that, and also how you would define AI, or was it not so necessary to define? You know, it's quite remarkable that the ITU um, created a platform for the coming together to facilitate a global discussion on artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence its implications on government, to society, and industry, and so forth. Really, it's historically was the most successful event ever, with over 500 experts coming together in plenary sessions and in you know breakthrough or private discussions and so forth. It also had a situation we had 47 media from around the world. Would you believe that? Like BBC was there, China Central Television. You know, all, you know, whether it's in America or, or from Asia or for Europe, where it represents the receiving a television crew. The reason I bring that up is usually in typical summits, you may have, you're lucky if you get one <laughs> major media uh, group covering it, but there's 47, that was the interest. 21 UN agencies coming together. Now keep in mind, the UN is almost like a federation of different UN agencies, and for them to come together, to work together, to look at some of the issues, the opportunities that are available through artificial intelligence and how it can be applied to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals to make the world a better place. It was just an, an amazing event. A lot was uh, discussed. They, uh, there was a lot of ideas created, and, and in fact, it's going to continue in some fashion. So let's talk about artificial intelligence. How would you define artificial intelligence? You know, I'll give you an acronym, the one that I use to sort of describe artificial intelligence. I call it C triple uh, A. So artificial intelligence is about human cognition or cognitive abilities being uh, enabled or, or perhaps even replaced by algorithms, by assistive capabilities and augmented capabilities, uh, automation. So that's really what it's about, right? So uh, really humans working with intel um, AI in some fashion to make things easier and better. So cognition, algorithms, automation, augmentation, assistance, maybe it's uh, C triple four or C quadruple four, I, A, I should say, right. rather than uh, triple A. And what about uh, in terms of visible impact? What do you think will be the biggest visible impact of AI in our daily lives within the next sort of five years or so, let's say? Probably the biggest impact will be how seamless it will be and integrated. And, and in fact, the impact would be um, invisible, but it will enhance every part of our lives. And so a scenario would be something like this. You're going to wake up, some kind of AI will be involved in you getting up, planning your day, scheduling your calendar, making appointments, ordering food, uh, going to the bank, uh, which, you know, doing any kind of financial transactions, involved in you uh, uh, doing your work. Uh, working with your children, with your spouse, uh, really infiltrating in some way or being seamlessly part of every part of your lives. So, and we're already seeing that now, right? You like, for example, there's this idea called robo-advisors. So if you want to do investments in the banking area or in your portfolio, uh, there's AI can do that. Uh, everybody has a smartphone and you've got some kind of AI in there that you talk to or can use to uh, do translations or book appointments, things like that. Um, you're doing email and spam filters is, is really kind of a machine learning system with people within sort of affiliate with AI that's sort of uh, uh, you know, managing that for you. I'm traveling and, and I'm in Busan and I, I log on to my system, one of my systems, and it says, 
oh no, I get a message back, somebody's just spoofing you, trying to illegally get into your account. So it's because there is some kind of foreign login happening, so it's warning me. That's all some kind of machine learning or AI is involved in that. Uh, autonomous vehicles, right? And all of the assistive kind of capabilities that you see in your cars today, and increasingly so. And in fact, in Singapore, they have taxis that are autonomous, and, uh, and you're going to see that in a different part of our, uh, the world. You know, you, we, we call a cab or you call Uber, and you know, there's a human there. It's, <laughs> that's going to happen. Um, you know, yeah. so, so that won't be impacted, right? So. so everything that's a bit clunky today will be much smoother and it'll be much more sophisticated. and and it'll be a much smoother ride for everybody. Yeah, and in fact, I, I, I'll give you an acronym. I, I've got another acronym, I call it CASTLE. So the, actually all four walls of the CASTLE are already here today, uh, represented in entities in some fashion. In fact, on October 11th, I've been asked to uh, speak with uh, a few others, just a small panel, uh, at the United Nations in New York. It's the United Nations uh, uh, meeting of the second committee of the General Assembly together with the ECOSOC, the Economic uh, Social Council, and, and they're the two chartered agencies of or portions of, uh, of the United Nations. Anyways, they've got a special three-hour meeting. It's in front of all the General Assembly. And um, they said, Steve, would you, because you did this work with the AI, would you be a, you know, a speaker, a uh, panel member for three hours? I said, sure. And they said, Steve, you know, do you know Dave Hansen? And, and, Sophia and I said, yeah, he's a good friend. Uh, so I sent them a, a copy of a video where uh, Sophia was speaking Mandarin with me. And Sophia and is the robot. Yeah, the uh, robot. It's sort of like, or as Hansen calls it, it's this child, right? And so um, anyways, these conversations uh, continued. And in fact, uh, what happened was uh, I did arrange uh, Sophia to be at this special meeting. And, and in my response to the director, because they were sort of finalizing things, I, I, I said, you, you realize that this is an historical inflection point, what's happening. That's going to happen on October 11th. And, and I explain why. And I said, castle's going to happen. In fact, the four walls of the castle are going to be established there through real entities. Uh, three of them are actually going to be physically present there. So now you're thinking, what does this castle mean, right? So uh, it's the C for castle for classic, classic human beings like you and I and the members of the uh, yeah. General Assembly that will be there. So, uh, so, uh, so that's the C in Castle. The A in Castle stands for augmented or hybrid human beings. I'm a hybrid. I, I have an embedded device that allows me to hear better. So, so augmented human beings will be there. And uh, uh, the, the S is for synthetic. So a lot of people don't know that actually they're doing synthetic, uh, creating synthetic genomes now. Um, in fact, by the end of the year, some really simple life forms will be completely created synthetically in the lab, and in about 10 years, they'll be to do with human beings. And then and the last uh, uh, A, so C-A-S-A, -A, so a classic augmented synthetic, uh, the last A is artificial. And in fact, Hansen's child, Sophia, this sort of artificial robot, which is really in its early stages, will be there. And, and so that's what I'm saying, the four stages, the four legs of castle, um, Classic augmented synthetic artificial life exists in America at the time when we're there on October 11th. Three will be in person, and and Sophia is going to open the event. Wow, well, definitely a first thing. And Sophia is going to close the event, and we're thinking maybe Sophia will also be on the panel answering questions as well in interactive fashion. <laughs> and there's another surprise I believe coming up, but I can't release that yet. Okay, so the drawbridge. First will be, time in history. The drawbridge will be firmly down. Then well, that's brilliant. That's that's, that's that's extremely exciting. In terms of uh, this particular event, you've been, uh, uh, you've seen. Obviously, there's lots of SMEs here. I believe uh, that uh, that you, you've been chatting to them as well. Uh, what key advice? for our bigger audience or our wider audience out there, would you give to uh, startups, early stage startups, is something which we we're focusing very much on? Yeah, I mean, I, that's a very good question. So let me expand that acronym of SMEs to M SMEs, which stands for micro, small, and medium enterprises. And the M is really startups, because small and medium enterprises are really beyond being startups. So, so uh, a big part of this uh, IT, uh, IT uh, you know, this uh, telecom world here by ITU is uh, sort of supporting M SMEs. And in fact, I was involved in the judging of these M SMEs. And 
I chaired or moderated a panel with founders, who, by the way, some of them were winners of the Global Innovation Awards that are, that are held here. So what are, what are some of the sort of key factors um, you know, to make them survive or allow them to survive? Uh, I think some of them are areas like um, um, having great relationships. Ultimately, the a success of a startup is going to be based on relationships. Uh, in fact, I would say 90% um, perhaps. Um, there's this idea I call grit. So I'm going to give you a definition of grit, right? And, and there's sort of a formal definition of grit and comes from one of the, I think it's Forbes or Fortune, but I've extended it a bit. So everybody has some kind of talent, right? So you work really hard, you combine that with talent, you get some skill, okay? Now you got some skill, you work really, really hard, and you're going to get some achievements, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you combine achievements and you work really hard and you persevere, you'll get grit. If you've got grit, it'll vastly increase the, the probability you'll succeed in your startup and, uh, and you, it'll reduce the risk. And I think as a venture capitalist, because uh, that's another sort of roller hat I wear, if I see that one element, I will bet on that versus even the idea grit, hard work, perseverance. Okay, well that's a brilliant advice and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, there'll be lots of people out there following it. Uh, in terms of uh, attending this event, obviously you know we've all uh, made a big trek out here to, to Busan and Korea, apart from obviously people who, who are based here, but uh, just wanted, wanted to find out from you, what's the value of attending events such as ITU Telecom World? Well, first of all, let's just uh, position ITU. ITU really is the number one facilita uh, facilitation platform for discussions of technology. But not just telecommunications, I'm talking cybersecurity, biometrics, uh, uh, blockchain technologies, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, standardization, uh, policies and things like that. It, it, they really are the number one platform for those kind of discussions and bringing the right parties together to get some progression in those areas. And then they have their seminal flagship conferences like Telecom World, and where all of these different experts from around the world come together and they share ideas, they collaborate, and they evolve the discussion. Uh, they launched a, a new journal officially at, at this event, an academic journal called the ICT Discovery Journal. Again, bringing cl uh, collaboration uh, all the different stakeholders together to you know, further science and further uh, innovation in some way. No other uh, entity can do that in the same fashion worldwide. And I can tell you that because I chair academic, uh, like these uh, global science organizations, I'm a venture capitalist, uh, I sit on industry councils and things like that, or I've created them, uh, you know, I helped found or founded this A African Summit. ITU, as if you look at it, there's ITUs in all of those threads in some fashion. Oh, that's brilliant. And finally, what's the most exciting thing that you've seen or heard here this week? You know, ITU has had me so busy. <laughs> 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 I actually haven't had a chance to look at the exhibition yet. So, I, um, what about in the conversations that you've been hearing? Is there anything that struck you? Is there anything that sparked your imagination? There is something that's happening in the world today that I think uh, people should, I think you'll find fascinating. It's uh, this idea of uh, massive um, simulation platforms that are being put out. So, you know, uh, you know, you have these supercomputers and they can model the galaxy, you know, like, you know, the, let's say 300 billion galaxies uh, out of, let's say, trillions of particles, and they can sort of model what's going to have something called dark matter and it's, it's how it evolves on gravity and what's going to happen to the universe. Put this in a supercomputer. That capability now is being commercialized. So there's a company called Improbable. In fact, uh, this came out of a CB Insights uh, report, but so I want to give them credit, but it's a really quite fascinating. They've got a VR gaming platform. They just raised, I think, over 500 million, and, and but governments are using it. Telecommunications uh, uh, companies are using it and other enterprises to simulate um, uh, solutions to big problems and things like that to help in decision making. So I think that's a really interesting thing uh, that's happening. And maybe one other idea, you know, people think that quantum computing is sort of like 50 years old, uh, but uh, uh, I belong to some called the ACM, Association for Computing Machinery, which is sort of the number one comp science organization in the world, like we have the Turing Award. 
Anyways, I just arranged the head of quantum computing for um, I IBM to um, be, do a webinar. And it's not 50 years away. I mean, there's quantum computers being used right now. They're solving real problems. And, uh, and when they're applied to something like artificial intelligence, we don't know what's going, you know, the capabilities are going to be unlimited, right? So I think that's going to be pretty magical what's going to happen. Right. So in a few years' time, who knows what the future holds for us? Well, you actually won't be interviewing me. It'll be some kind of a, a artificial assistant, you know, right? <laughs> Sophia's daughter, probably. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> with gravitas and, and, with, a, and an English accent. Exactly, and I'll be up to go to the beach and relax and <laughs> just every now and again uh, approve, approve, approve. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's <laughs> Maybe you'll miss me, but anyway, but I will certainly miss you if you, if you weren't here and uh, replaced by uh, an artificial intelligence here, but thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. That was brilliant. Thanks for your insights, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Oh, it, was, it was a real pleasure. Thank you again. For Thank inviting. you. Cheers. Cheers.